In this video, we're going to look at parallel and perpendicular lines. We'll start with parallel lines. If two lines are parallel, they'll always have a fixed distance between them. So imagine train tracks. Parallel lines will have the same gradient. So if we go ahead and look at this, these two lines are parallel. So we can see now on here, y is equal to mx plus c, is this one just here, and y is equal to mx plus b is here. The gradients are the same, which we could change. So if I change those, the gradient of each of them is now three. But the y-intercept of the purple line is going to be four, and the y-intercept of the red line is going to be one. These are parallel lines. If we look at perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines are at 90 degree right angles to this original line. So if I go ahead and do this, this green line is perpendicular to both of now the other lines. When we're looking at perpendicular lines, we can state that the product of the two gradients will always give us negative one. So m1 multiplied by m2 will be equal to negative one if the two lines are perpendicular. And we can use this notation for perpendicular. So if we had now the gradient m1 was equal to 3, m2 would be equal to negative one third. I simply like to think of this now as the negative reciprocal. All we do is take the fraction, turn it upside down and change the sign. If m1 was equal to negative 5 thirds, the gradient of a line perpendicular m2 is going to be equal to positive 3 fifths. So I've just inverted the fraction and now changed the sign. If we go back to our graphs here, at the moment we can see now that the gradient, and I'll just change this back down to 1 to make that nice and easy. If we look at this one just here, we can see the gradient now of the red line is 1. The gradient of the green line is negative 1. If we multiply 1 by negative 1, clearly now we're going to get negative 1 and they are perpendicular. If I change the gradient now here and we've got a gradient of 2 on both these parallel lines, we only need one of them, this one right here, the gradient of the perpendicular will be negative 1 half. And we can see that it's going down 1 for every 2 it goes across. If I change now the gradient of the red line to negative 3, what we'll get is the gradient of the perpendicular line will be positive 1 third. We can see it's going across 3 for every one it goes up. Yet this one is going down 3 for every one it goes across. And that now gives us this result here. So parallel lines will have equal gradients perpendicular lines, the product of the two gradients is negative 1, or if you like, you can invert the fraction and change the sign. So let's go ahead and do some questions involving parallel and perpendicular lines. In question 16, we're asked to write down the gradient of the line parallel and perpendicular to the following lines. So the notation I'm going to use for parallel is this one, and notation I'm going to use for perpendicular is this one. So this line is in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So this right here we can evaluate. We've already seen this before. So we can say now that the gradient of the line parallel is going to be 3. The perpendicular is going to be negative 1 third. This one just here is not in the correct form. We can see that the gradient of this particular line is negative 2. So the line parallel will have a gradient of negative 2. This is negative 2x plus 4. Therefore, the perpendicular will be positive 1 half. This is negative 2 over 1. I've simply inverted the fraction and changed the sign. OK, if we just rewrite this one, now we can write this as y is equal to negative x, just by simply subtracting the x from both sides. So we can see that the gradient now of this particular line is going to be negative 1, so the line parallel to it will be negative 1, the perpendicular will be positive 1. 
With this one, I'm just going to rearrange it. So we can write this as 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. Dividing through by 3, y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 7 thirds. The gradient of this line is negative 2 thirds. Therefore, the line parallel will be negative 2 thirds. The perpendicular will be positive 3 over 2. This one just here, let's just rearrange that. We can say now that this is QY by adding QY to both sides is equal to PX and then we're going to have minus 4. Dividing through by the Q, we're going to have P over QX minus 4 over Q. The gradient of this line is going to be positive P over Q. Therefore, the perpendicular will be negative Q over P. So that is just evaluating the gradient now of a line parallel and perpendicular to a given line. In this question, we're asked to find an equation of the line 1 parallel to and 2 perpendicular to the line y is equal to 5x plus 1 that passes through the point 2 comma 4. For the equation of a straight line, all we need are two things. We need a gradient and a point that it goes through. So for the parallel, we're going to have the gradient m is going to be equal to 5, as we can see here. And the point we're going to have is going to be 2 comma 4. For the perpendicular now, the gradient m is going to be the negative reciprocal of this, which is going to give me negative 1 fifth. And then we're going to have the point, and that again is 2, 4. We're asked for an equation. That means we're not asked for it in a particular form, and we can write it as we wish. So I'm going to use now y minus y1 is equal to m the gradient x minus x1, as I've looked at in the past. You're more than welcome to use a different approach. So for the line parallel, y minus 4 is going to be equal to 5, then we'll have x minus 2. If I wanted to tidy that up, I could write that as y is equal to 5x minus 10 plus the 4, which is y is equal to 5x minus 6. So nice and straightforward, nice and logical. This one just here, y minus 4 is equal to the gradient, which is going to be negative 1 fifth, and then we're going to have x minus the 2. I'm going to write this in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. Multiplying through by the 5, 5y minus 20. And expanding the brackets will be equal to negative x. So negative x plus 2. So we're going to have now x plus 5y. And when this writes on, for some reason it's not. Uh, minus 22 will be equal to 0. So that's a 5 rather than a 6. Okay, so that's done. I'm really not sure why it's not enjoying writing over there. So if we have a line parallel, the gradient will be the same. Perpendicular, it will be the negative reciprocal. If you're asked to show this, you can write m1 multiplied by m2 is equal to negative 1 if perpendicular. Some exams give you a mark for writing that. Okay. The perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB crosses the x-axis at the point P. Given the coordinates of A are 2, 1 and the coordinates of B are 6, 4, find the coordinates of the point P. OK, this is the perpendicular bisector. A perpendicular bisector cuts this line in half and it is, of course, at right angles. Right angles means that it's going to be perpendicular and we can use now this with the gradient. So A is just here, which is 2, 1. B is just here, which is 6, 4. So as I said in my first video, if in doubt, sketch it out. So what we want is the midpoint. So we've got now the midpoint and the midpoint on here, and I'll just jot it here. And that's a capital M for midpoint. We've got 2 plus 6 divided by 2 and 1 plus 4 divided by 2. So that's going to give me the midpoint, which is going to be 4. 
and then on here we're going to have the midpoint which is going to be 2.5 or 5 over 2. You can do that purely uh, graphically if you wish or uh, using geometry if you wanted. I'm going to use the midpoint. Okay, what we're looking for then is the line that goes through here that is now perpendicular. So what I'm now going to look at, lowercase m, m1 is going to be the gradient of AB. I could have written MAB. So what we're going to have is the change in y, 4 minus 1, over the change in x, which is going to be 6 minus 2. That's going to give me on here now 3 over what we're going to have 3 over 4 therefore m2 which is going to be the gradient of now this perpendicular line or we might hear normal normal is also um, uh, something that you might hear for a perpendicular line the normal is going to be negative 4 thirds as m1 multiplied by m2 will be equal to negative 1 if perpendicular so what we've got here now is the m2, the gradient of this line is going to be negative 4 thirds. So I'm going to find the equation of this line, the perpendicular bisector, and we've got exactly what we need. y minus y1 is equal to m, the gradient, x minus x1. For the equation of a straight line, we need two things, the point that it goes through and a gradient. So we're going to have y minus the y coordinate, which is going to be 5 over 2. And that's going to be equal to negative 4 thirds. And then we're going to have on here x minus v4. So that now is an equation for the perpendicular bisector. We're told now that it crosses the x-axis at the point P. So what we're going to have here is the following. We've got now, if it crosses the x-axis, y will be equal to 0. Now, I haven't put this in any particular form, um, as I'm just going to work from here. So I'm going to, at this stage, divide both sides by negative 4 thirds. If I divide this by negative 4 thirds, that is going to give me 15 over 8 is equal to x minus 4. You can go ahead and solve this equation any way you like. And then I'm just going to add 4 to both sides. So this is going to be 15 over 8 plus 4, which is 32 over 8. And that will be equal to x. So we can say now that this will be 47 over 8, comma 0. And that now is going to be the point P. So all I've done is simply now found the perpendicular bisector of the point A, B. I found the midpoint, which is the, the bisector part, and then the perpendicular, which is going to be now the gradient of A, B. Finding that, then it's the negative reciprocal, substituting into a straight line, and then finding this point P. Quite um, a bit of work involved in that one. But again, we should be fairly happy with finding a straight line. OK, it says the lines x plus 3y minus 4 equals 0 and y is equal to mx plus 2 are perpendicular. We need to find the value of m. OK, let's go ahead and look now at the gradients. So what we've got then is the gradients and we'll consider the gradients. So on this one, we can write this now as 3y is going to be equal to negative x plus now 4. All I'm doing is rearranging this in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, so let's now do that. So all I've done is rearrange. So uh, 3y is equal to negative x plus 4. So y is equal to negative 1 third x plus 4 thirds. So that now is what we've got. So I'm going to say that m1 is equal to negative 1 third. If we now consider the next one, y is equal to mx, and then we've got plus 2. So if I call this one m2, m2 is going to be equal to m. We can state if perpendicular, 
m1 multiplied by m2 is going to be equal to negative 1. Therefore, on here, we can say now that negative 1 third m multiplying these two is going to be equal now to negative 1. And then from here, we can say that m is equal to 3. So m is equal to 3. So that's one approach. Alternatively, you could have looked at that and thought, well, it's the negative reciprocal of this one, therefore we could have written it down. But being an exam type of question, I would want to show full workings. So from here, we can see now that the gradient of this line is negative third. This one is going to be three. I'm not going to leave that chance. I'm going to state this and then just solve the equation. But of course, you can just write down that that's going to be three. OK, let's look at another one. Given the lines px plus q equals 0 and 2y equals 3 plus 5qx are parallel, express p in terms of q. Again, very similar approach. Let's start with this one. So rearranging this, y is equal to negative px plus 0. So that is the first one. And then if we look at this one now, I'm just going to rewrite this and we can divide both sides by 2 and say that this one, y is equal to 5 over 2 qx plus 3 over 2. So from this now, we've got these gradients. Therefore, if these are parallel, we can say now that negative p will be equal to 5 over 2q. All I'm doing is looking at the gradients, and if these are parallel, they will be the same. So we need p in terms of q, so simply dividing now by negative 1. So we've got negative 5 over 2q. So express p in terms of q. p is negative 5 over 2q. That's just showing that we know that parallel lines have equal gradients. OK, in question 21, we're told the line L passes through the point negative 1, 5 and is perpendicular to the line 2x plus 4y plus 7 equals 0. The line, meets, uh, the line L meets the line y equals 3x plus 8 at the point P. We need to find the coordinates of P. So let's start off with the line L. It's perpendicular to this line and passes through this point. All we ever need for the equation of a straight line is a gradient and a point that it goes through. So let's start off with the gradient of a line that it's perpendicular to. So if I just rearrange this one just here, what we've got then is the following. We've got 4y is equal to negative 2x, and then we're going to have minus 7. So y is equal to, dividing both sides by 4, negative 1 half x minus 7 over 4. So what we can say from this, m1 is equal to negative 1 half. Therefore, m2 is going to be equal to 2 as m1 multiplied by m2 will be equal to negative 1 if perpendicular. So what we've got then is the gradient now of this line perpendicular. So we've got the gradient and we've got a point that it goes through and that point is negative 1, 5. Subbing this into a straight line using y minus y1 is equal to m, the gradient x minus x1. y minus 5 is equal to 2. Then we're going to have x minus the negative 1. So that's going to give me now y minus 5 is going to be equal now to 2 and we get what we're going to have 2x plus that's going to be plus 1 so that's going to be plus 2 so we can say y is going to be equal to 2x plus 7 okay so that's what we get that's now uh that's the point just fair let's check we got all of that in uh, so that's going to be x plus 1 that's going to be 2x plus 2 that looks good so this is the equation of the line L. And I'm going to call that now equation 1. And we've got here y is equal to 3x plus 8. And I'll call that equation 2. 
if y is equal to 2x plus 7 and y is equal to 3x plus 8, we can say 2x plus 7 is equal to 3x plus 8. So from here, we can see that x is going to be equal to negative 1. So all I'm doing is subtracting 2x from both sides and subtracting 8. Uh, and we can sub that back into either one of these, sub it into number 1. y is equal to 2 lots of negative 1 plus 7. And we've got y is going to be equal to 5. So we can see from this now solving the simultaneous equations, we've got now the point, and that is going to be negative 1 comma 5. So we've used the properties of a perpendicular line, then we solved a simultaneous equation to find the points of intersection. So we end up now on here with negative 1 comma 5 as now the solution to the question where we're finding the coordinates of P. So there we go, that's uh, an introduction to parallel and perpendicular lines. So if you have parallel lines, the gradients are equal. If you have perpendicular lines, the product of the two gradients is negative one. Or if you like, we have the negative reciprocal in terms of that gradient.